Yeah. Eric, thank you very much for this very kind introduction, uh, dear audience. <laughs> Since this is a Siemens-sponsored session, so of course I have my disclosures. And I want uh, to thank Siemens Helsinius for having me here and for the good cooperation the last years. So when I started to uh, create this talk, then I tried to find an analogy, and so I I thought maybe a car ride from Lucerne to Paris could be a nice analogy. And uh, when you look uh, 30 years back, I know it's a session about the future, but I want to have a glance back maybe to explain what happened in the last years to have then a per uh, future perspective. So when you look back uh, 30 years ago, we need a paper map and it led us to a lot of detours. It costs time and we had so much effort. And so this is the same thing when you look like in a hybrid OR 30 years ago. So it looked like this. You see the imaging quality, it was more or less uh, black and white. So nobody was talking about those levels or image quality. We were happy when we could see the stand and uh, have an idea of the anatomy. So what things changed? And when I come by car today, um, then I have a lot of assisting uh, tools, smart assisting uh, tools in the car and helpers, and this is the same in the modern hybrid ORs. So, in a car, you all know it, you have it maybe in your own cars, we have an interface where we can talk with all these tools, we can kind of set up the tools or set up our um, uh, individual setup, and it's the same with the artist Fino of Siemens. And with this interface, you can communicate and uh, organize your program, but still, if you want to do everything yourself, that becomes quite complicated. And so in the car, everything is automated. You get traffic information. The route is rearranged. You uh, can detour, or you, you will not have detours. But if there's a traffic jam, maybe you get a new journey uh, route. And same, the hybrid OR helps you in that case. So it's not only um, that, uh, that you can manage your tool. It's, again, like in the traffic. All the cars, they are communicating with each other. The cars have detectors, cameras, everything, know where the rest of the cars and traffic partners are. And even we have satellite organization. And so, kind of comparable the situation in modern or hybrid ORs. All the tools, we don't notice that, but they are talking and communicating with each other and rearrange the setup of the hybrid OR to give us the best opportunity and imaging quality. And if you perform, Oh, sorry, I thought it was a movie. It's not starting. Yeah. So, but anyhow, um, you, you change the situations all the time by um, yeah, changing detector setups, moving detectors, put in materials, put out materials. And this is always a new situation. And to optimize, yeah, you get a very sharp image, but how comes? So there's a technology behind that, and that technology is uh, displayed here on this sketch. So you have organ programs, different organ programs that are um, preset for the region that you are um, uh, uh, exploring. Then you have different options that you are interfering yourself. So the collimation, the, um, the distances, the rotations and everything. Also the patient is different. And so you have so many different situations and um, variants but there's an automatic real-time adjustment which is based on a neural network which is requiring or asking data from a database of 300 million um, imaging uh, data sets. So that means it goes so fast and it's rearranged real-time, you don't understand, but it's happening a lot. And this has impact on everything that is responsible for your detector dose and the image quality. So if you do, didn't have all these smart tools, so it was like being in a roundabout, don't know which detour, which exit to take, and you get into a detour, you, you get lost, and maybe you have to find your way by try and error like it was in the older times 30 years ago. So the image quality in that case would be like here in that uh, image here, but through all these technology that we have in behind, Image quality is getting much better. You get sharper images which, with lower dose. So what does it mean um, in reality? So 
the literature and the guidelines, they say a standard EVA should be performed with 200 gray uh, per centimeter square, and this is what they recommend, but what we've learned and what we have when we are performing at Lucerne, by using all this technology, we come to an ultra-low dose uh, standard for a standard EVA, which is around 5 gray per centimeter square. And how did this come? This is the result of learning how the technology works and to adapt our workflow to the technology and to the technologic uh, setups and to standardize our procedures. So what you see here in that image is the pretest that we've done to understand how everything in the imaging software and the, yeah, the surrounding is working. And so we learned about technology and we combined it to standardization and to the training program of everybody in our stuff. And we made a study to see what effect this had on our uh, results. And as I said, we, have a mile, we created a milestone approach for standardization of the workflow, which you can see here. And this le led us to results which are very, very uh, down to that what the recommendations are saying. So the case here is that we've performed, showed a median um, dose product of 5.6 gray per centimeter square over uh, all the patients we have that uh, median now. This is our benchmark. And the lowest case here was 2.4 four uh, gray per centimeter square, and this was not performed by an expert senior surgeon, it was performed by a third year trainee of our team. So you can see this can be transformed if you have standardization, if you know how to set up everything, and if you teach your team, this can transfer to be uh, your everyday routine. Let's see what happens if you have more complex cases. And then we uh, watched a series of eight patients consecutively for fenestrated EVAR, and we found out that um, even though uh, this is much more complicated, you have more angulation, you have more complex anatomies, that we have very, very low results for some of these fenestrations, which are even not uh, at one gray per centimeter square, but we have also outliers. And we looked deeply at the outliers, we understood that these outliers were because we didn't stick quite to our um, knowledge that we learned, um, we did things wrong, for example, we didn't zoom enough, we didn't use the digital zoom enough, or we, the wrong software setup was uh, set up, so this was a problem for us. Uh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but it's very interesting because it's very low dose, and lima means Lucerne... Endovascular milestone approach. Okay. Complicated. It's purely for, for the guy from Lucerne. Anyway, <laughs> how do you, because it's very low dose, I'm very jealous, I, I need to improve my, uh, <laughs> all the skills. Um, how do you explain such a difference uh, of regarding one fenestration to the others? Because you mentioned fan one, two, three, four, this, it's, we know that it's such depending on the angulation, the rotation you may apply, the zoom and also the, the, the time and the, uh, the, the frequency, the dose you need to deliver, is this, what's, what, how you can explain such a difference between the fenestration? Yeah. So as I said, it's a very, very good and important question. As I said, so um, we learned how the machine worked, but at that time when we did this study, we didn't set up the case flows, which I want to show later, which is the future perspective. So this was all done, an arrangement, a combination between of the optique software of the hybrid OR and our manual adjustments. And if you miss something in this manual adjustments, then you end up with much, much, much higher dose than when you have everything set in a perfect, optimized way. So for example, the fenestrations, fen one, two, three, four, are all the same. And if you look in the third row, we have in the first patient 3.65 gray per centimeter square. In the second patient, it was 85, which is a dimension or a world away from that. So what we learned here was that we had the wrong um, uh, software set up. We, we were in the wrong organ uh, program, and this came because somehow when we rearranged by hand, we got on the wrong button, we didn't notice, and we ended up with these values. And this is a very, very important learning. And so the next step, which is the future aspect then, would be to automize also these setups, and we are on the way to do that. Yeah. And when you mention such does deliver per penetration, it means cannulation, it means cannulation plus sheaf in place, or it means 
demonstration, I mean, stands also flared in place. Yeah, this finished. is the final angiogram of the bridging stand. Yeah. All included. So, cannulation, placement of the bridging stand, flaring, and then make a final angiogram. And after the final angiogram, this is the values that we create. So, and the next region would be the arch. And then you see on the left side, the first arch that we did with this um, optique, but without knowing how it really worked. And we ended up with uh, 10.4 uh, grays per centimeter square. And after all that inventing, or, uh, inventing Lima and uh, introducing it to our workflow, we end up with the second uh, image here, which is 0 0.7 grave for a final angiogram for a triple branch EVAR. Yeah? And this is really an, another dimension. And also here, if you look in the um, history of how we developed, it's the first four cases that we did after having optique. We were the first hospital in Switzerland, and the worldwide actually, had, that had the upgrade from the V10 to the V30 software of... Um, of Optique. And so um, then we had all that and we learned how to use it. You see, it took us only three cases to come down from 296 gray per centimeter square dose area product to, um, yeah, let's say below 20. And our benchmark for those triple arches is below 50 now. Yeah. And one more very important learning is that we have, in the, uh, what we see here in this picture on the right side, it was the first LifeTech G branch performed in Switzerland. And um, what I want to highlight here, if you look at the operation time, it took us seven hours. You see, we were not so familiar with that stand graft. And actually, you don't show these numbers uh, on a conference. But since uh, what is very interesting here, we had three hours of imaging time, which is quite really long. But if you look at the dose error product, it was 28.09 gray. Why? Because all the seven hours of radiation and working we had the endurance to stick with our concepts, and then we ended up with such a low um, dose levels. And I think this is really something uh, interesting here. And uh, when you look what happens here, this is highlighted in the dose protocol. It's in the red uh, boxes. You see that um, when you look on series 11, which is the above uh, uh, part, and the uh, series 12, things are changing. And all these changes of copper filter, it's German, sorry for that, but Brennflake Micro, this is like the focus and everything. So these are not done by yourself. It's impossible. If you want to arrange all these things, then again, it's like being in a detour, right? So what is the purpose for the future? And the automobile industry, they are kind of teasing us with very luxury uh, uh, car rides where you have your hands off even watching a video. And so on the right side, maybe this could be the future also for hybrid ORs. And we are so, not so much away from that future. Uh, as you can see on the right side, <clears throat> this is case flows implemented in our hospital. And the C-arm and everything is uh, uh, moving itself. And we have the hands free for wire loading, for doing all our um, performances. And the C-arm knows what is the next step. And it doesn't only move... Uh, by itself, it's, it's also rearranging all these things that I was showing you today. Meanwhile, at the same time, and you know that you have, you have always the optimal setup for what you are doing. So the future is not so far away. You have already implemented on your system, but we have to kind of learn how to introduce it into our workflow. Thank you very much.